have seen a great light. Those who dwell in the land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. Welcome to our online Christmas carol service. If ever there was a Christmas where we needed some cheer, then surely it was this year. And so we've got representatives from all our three parish communities and through music, readings from sacred scripture, poetry and prayer, we'll renew our thanksgiving for the gift of the Christ child, born at Bethlehem to be saviour of all peoples and all times. We're going to begin with the blessing of the Christmas crib, and Rosie and Anna are here to help us today. So Rosie, you're going to start off. Lord, we love to hear the Christmas story. Help us understand it better. Make it more real to us this year. With Mary and Joseph, we journey in faith to Bethlehem. With the shepherds, we hear again the good news of the Saviour's birth. With the angels, we glorify God's holy name. God of all people, from the beginning of creation you have shown your great love. When our need for a saviour was great, you sent your Son, born of the Virgin Mary, bringing us joy and peace, justice, mercy and love. Lord, bless this manger and all who look upon it. May it remind us of the humble birth of Jesus and raise our thoughts to him who is God with us and Saviour of all, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government will upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. On the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time forth and for everyone, the zeal of the Lord and the hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Coming by R.S. Thomas And God held in his hand a small globe. Look, he said. The sun looked. Far off as through water, he saw a scorched land of fierce colour. The light burned there. Crusted buildings cast their shadows. A bright serpent, a river uncoiled itself, radiant with slime. On a bare hill, a bare tree saddened the sky. Many people held out their thin arms to it as though waiting for a vanished April to return to its crossed boughs. The sun watched them. Let me go there, he said.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. When the kindness and love of God our Saviour for mankind were revealed, it was not because he was concerned with any righteous actions we might have done ourselves. It was for no reason except his own compassion that he saved us by means of the cleansing water of rebirth and by renewing us with the Holy Spirit, which he has so generously poured over us through Jesus Christ our Saviour. He did this so that we should be justified by his grace to become heirs looking forward to inheriting eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is a medieval poem called I Sing of a Maiden and the author is unknown. I sing of a maiden that is makeless, king of all the kings, to her son she chairs. He came also stiller, there his mother lay, as dew in April that falleth on the grass. He came also still to his mother's bower, as dew in April that falleth on the flower. He came also still, there his mother lay, as dew in April that falleth on the spray. Mother and maiden was never none but she, well may such a lady God's mother be. My dear people, let us love one another, since love comes from God, and everyone who loves is begotten by God 
and knows God. Anyone who fails to love can never have known God because God is love. God's love for us was revealed when God sent into the world his only son so that we could have life through him. This is the love I mean, not our love for God, but God's love for us when he sent his son to be the sacrifice that takes our sins away. My dear people, since God has loved us so much, we too should love one another. No one has ever seen God, but as long as we love one another, God will live in us and his love will be complete in us. We can know that we are living in him and he is living in us because he lets us share his spirit. We ourselves saw and we testify that the Father sent his Son as Saviour of the world, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So at the beginning of the carol service we have the blessing of the manger and we're just going to look at it in a little bit more detail now and uh, again I've got Anna and Rosie to help me and they're looking very Christmassy I must say. Anna's wearing a, a Christmas cracker with her headband and uh, Rosie just turned to the camera there. You've got a, a Santa and a Christmas tree and she told me that she had two reindeer but they fell off so uh, but it looks perfect anyway. So girls, um, have, have you got um, a Christmas crib set at home? Do you um, have well, one? we've got like, like a small one. A small one. But not like that. No, yeah. uh, we're we're, we've, we've got a small one, one too. One. We're going to try and get one. Uh huh. Um, but we just got like a little one with like the angel holding a star. Right, okay. Every year I go up to our attic and I have to crawl along like this to find the place where the uh, crib set is and I always enjoy putting it on our mantelpiece so it's not as big as this one, this is designed so it can be seen from a distance. Um, and there was just one thing wrong with it, it didn't have a donkey in it and um, so I was so pleased the other year when I managed to find a donkey, now that completes the set for me. But let's have a look at the animals that we've got here today. What, 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 what things do you particularly notice as you look at it? Um, well, it, there's kind of a bull over there in the corner. A bull, yes. Yeah, because it's got like horns. Do you know what we call that bull? It's called, do you know that? Uh, uh, mm. It's called an ox. Have you heard of an ox? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a bit like a cow, but they're big strong yeah. cows that were used for pulling heavy things like carts. So they were, they were farm animals. So that's here in the stable where Jesus was born. Um, what else can we see besides the ox? Um, Mary praying. Mary's praying, isn't she? What do you think she might be praying? Um, to say thank you for God to to tell her to do to have the baby of God's son. Thanking God for what He's asked her to do. Yeah, very precious role, isn't it, to be mother to Jesus? And mums are so important, aren't they? So we all love and need our mums, and, uh, and Jesus was going to absolutely need his mum as well. But it's not only Mary, is it? Who else is there? Joseph. Joseph, yes. Do you notice anything about Joseph? Well, he's going like that, yeah. um, because he loves Jesus, and also he was quite, he wasn't really ready to have the Son of God. No. Yeah, and he was only a carpenter, and... He needed God to choose a different person. Wow. But God asked him to do this, and in the end he said yes, didn't he? So, but he's got his hand on his heart as if to say, God help me to do what yeah. you have asked me to do. And do you notice this here? Yeah. What's that? Um, it looks like something like where the shepherds have. 
Yes, that's a good thought, isn't it? It's a sort of a pilgrim's staff, yeah. you know. Uh, do, do you ever go walking and see people out there in the country with their walking staffs, you know, to help them as they go along? I mean, Mary and Joseph, they've had a long journey to Bethlehem from Nazareth. It's taken them a couple of days, maybe three days to get there. And of course, it'd be very slow going for Mary, so uh, be slow going with her expecting her baby any time. And then afterwards, they had to escape to Egypt, you know. Have you heard that part yeah, of the gospel story? That. You're doing that at the moment, yeah. are you? Yeah. So almost as soon as baby Jesus was born, they had to flee uh, to save Jesus mm -hmm. from Herod, and they had to go to Egypt. So that's why Joseph's got a staff there. And there's a prophet called Isaiah, and he said that the ox and the ass, they know their master's crib, but um, people are slow to recognize the one that God has sent. And uh, so the ox and the ass remind us that even now we're slow to recognize Jesus for who he really is, the Son of God. Uh, but they know, somehow, they know even when we're slow at recognizing him. But there's the star there, lots of stars in this starry sky, um, to lift our eyes to God's greater creation. The whole of creation here is worshipping the Son of God born as a little baby. And uh, it's such a beautiful thing, this crib scene. We're coming up to 800 years since the first crib scene was made. And St. Francis, in the year 1223, that's a very long time ago, isn't it? He had a uh, at Greccio, a village in Italy, um, a get together with the villagers to reenact the, the story of Jesus' birth. And they found a little baby and its mum. Uh, so they were there at the centre. All the shepherds came with their sheep and they filled this stable. And uh, then the priest celebrated the Mass over the place where the baby was in the manger. So it was very special, and ever since then, we've been entering into this uh, story again as we bless the Christmas crib. So it's good to just spend a few moments each day during the Christmas season, perhaps when things have gone quiet, to just come into the place where we have our crib set at home and just to thank God for the gift of his son, Jesus.
Hello. Um, around this time, you hear a lot of getting into the true spirit of Christmas. And we do this, you know, decorating our homes. We see it, you know, in our, in our adverts and sales and, you know, shopping around and trying to get everybody everything because we, we all want to get everyone that perfect gift. And sometimes we watch lots of movies. I've been obsessed watching Christmas movies. I mean, that's pretty much what you can do when you're in isolation, watch a lot of TV. And I've watched so many Christmas movies because I know it's going to have a happy ending. And they all have a specific recipe, you know, someone's not happy, uh, no one understands them, and then they meet some magical uh, being, Elf, Rudolph, Santa himself, and they take them on a wild adventure, and then at the end, you know, they bring them back to the family, and, and that's the spirit of Christmas, and then Santa Claus, you know, flies across the sky. And, and those movies all have a beautiful message, you know, family and friends, and yeah, that is... That is the spirit of Christmas in a way, but I think for the faith, it's so much more. For me, the true spirit of Christmas is represented in the Advent wreath. In today's reading, in the book of Isaiah, it says, so uh, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and he shall be known as wonderful counselor, the mighty God, everlasting father, Prince of Peace. That scripture brings me so much hope and joy and love and peace into my life, knowing that God has given us his son. And so we see that in the Advent wreath, you have the evergreens in a circle, that never ending love of God. And he gives us Christ Jesus. So then we have that white candle in the center. He gives us Christ and then Christ is surrounded by four candles which represent hope, peace, joy, and love. Know that to receive those beautiful gifts, God wants to be a wonderful counselor in your life. And, and if you've ever had this moment where you've, you've been down and you've received a text message, an email, a, a phone call from someone, and, and they help you at that right moment, that's God working in your life. He always is there at the right time. And, and having an everlasting father in God, knowing that he's going to be there for you no matter what. The, the Bible says like, um, that he will never leave you nor forsake you. And in these times when we're isolated, it's just good to know that he is there for you. He is there for us. And that brings great joy and peace into my life. And I hopefully it would bring peace and joy and hope into yours. So for this Christmas, when you think about the true spirit of Christmas and you sit there with your family and your friends, whether it be in your bubble or through a, a, Zoom, a Zoom meeting, know that these gifts are yours and can be re-gifted you can share hope, peace, joy, and love, whether it be through actions or words. So have yourself a Merry Christmas. God bless. Christmas Bells by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. I heard the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play, and wild and sweet the words repeat, of peace on earth, goodwill to men. On this day when the goodness and kindness of God our Saviour have appeared, let us bring our prayers before him, not trusting in our own good works, but in his mercy. We pray for Pope Francis, bishops, priests and deacons, especially Patrick our bishop, we pray that all members of our parish will be servants to one another and share the love and peace of our Saviour to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for justice, peace and reconciliation in the world. 
We remember all the countries where there is war and oppression. We pray that the message of Christmas will inspire the hearts of people everywhere to turn to one another with compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who, this Christmas, are sad or lonely, sick or grieving, especially those who can't be with their families because of restrictions or because they are in hospital, that our Lord will console and strengthen them with his presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Let us pray for everyone who is homeless this Christmas, for refugees and exiles separated from their families, and for those who are distressed or in need, that they may find God's love for them in the care and friendship of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray that the homes of all Christians will be filled with hope, peace, love and joy, and that we may bring Christ's understanding and kindness to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our loved ones who have died, that the peace and joy of heaven may be theirs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Joining together in the prayer Jesus taught us, we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. We pray, O Lord our God, that the Virgin Mary is merited to bear God and man in her chaste womb. May commend the prayers of your faithful in your sight. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for this carol service. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'd like to thank everyone who's taken part and for those who've worked hard to get the church looking so beautiful today. Finally, I'd like to wish you all the blessings of this beautiful season. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one all things earthly and heavenly, fill you with his joy and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.